Hey, what's going on, everybody? Doing something different today. Not playing Civ 5. Playing some Civ 4, actually. Just, uh, beyond the sword. Really excited to be here. Um, and today we are playing with something a little bit different. We're not playing with just the default vanilla experience. We're playing with a special mod, um, that I enjoy using, called Better Bat AI and BUG. And one of the things that that do that it does and that it includes is a texture map pack, which called Blue Marble, which just prees everything up, makes it look really organic. So you can see those those hills, that desert, those, even the river. Everything just looks that much more lush and interesting. The other thing you're gonna see is that it also displays our civics over here, and I'm pretty much on the fence about that one. Um, I like it because it's more info in my display. It's more that I can sort of see and have access to, be mindful of. But the problem with it, uh, I think the issue that it has, is that I it kind of annoys me sometimes. So I'm on the fence about it. You guys tell me if you want it on or off. Uh, you can even adjust your FOV if you want. Uh, by the way, don't adjust your FOV. Just just don't do it. Hi there, Mr. Pig. Um, yeah, just just don't mess with the FOV. And see so here we can kind of see like a uh, almost like a lateral checkerboard kind of view, which is I think an interesting sort of gives the um, gives the, uh, the hills a little bit of depth, you know. But overall, just play with FOV 42. Just just don't mess with it. It's fun, but I would not recommend it. Um, and there's this toolbar down here, it's another part of, of uh, Bug, and I don't terribly like it, but it's there. I'll be explaining some of the, the features as we go on in the game, but one important thing to remember is that it does not alter gameplay. The, well, I guess, besides improving the AI, but overall, nothing is added. The game isn't made harder or easier by new additions, by fundamental gameplay changes. Bug, I believe, stands for better unaltered gameplay. So this is still the same experience I'm going to get, gameplay-wise, as if I were playing vanilla. I highly recommend downloading the mod. You can find it on Civ Fanatics. I should probably link it in the description. But yeah, um, going in, we're playing as, as you can see, or maybe you can't, the Celts. And the Celts are a lot of fun, and I'll sort of go into sort of the strategy, what I have in my head, what we're sort of doing with these guys, and sort of what I'm planning on. Right. So, the synergy in the way I'm sort of trying to get this game to go, the Celts start with mysticism and hunting. Mysticism is sort of a mid-level tech, not fantastic, but it does give you, uh, a, like, a lead into a religion, so you can get meditation or polytheism faster if that's what you're into. Another thing that, um, we're gonna get is hunting for free, and hunting is not good, it's just, it isn't. I guess it's the only, it's a, the requirement for getting archery, but that's it. It's one of the worst techs you can start with. The good thing about this the is that since hunting allows us to build scouts, we don't start with a warrior, warrior, we actually start with a scout instead. So we can use this to get a large uh, exploration bonus early on. Civ 4 scouts are not like Civ 5 scouts, however. Um, they don't, as you can sort of see, he's wrapping around the, the rough terrain. They don't move faster through rough terrain. They just move two spaces, which would normally, if, you, if you're like me and you come to Civ 5, you'd be like, yeah, so. But the thing is, units in Civ 4 that aren't civilian units like the Settler or the Scout, uh, are Scouts sort of weird because they can't attack, but they only move one. So the Scout actually is better in it, it moves more. Right. So those are our starting decks. And there are some benefits to not starting with fishing, but um, I'm not going to get into that right now because I. I'm not super high level. I don't know if I've explained, but we're on a Pangea map, on a large Pangea map. Uh, we're also playing on... Now, I could be wrong about this, but I believe it is the Civ 4 version of the Civ 5 King difficulty. So it should be like Prince, I believe. Uh, is that possible to find game options? No. Uh... It isn't, but that's how it's going. Anyway, we're going to get 41. Can we get to the 42? There we go. Yeah. Another thing um, we're going to see with the Celts is... Well, all right, let's talk about uniques, right? We get the Gaelic Warrior, or Gallic Warrior, in 
instead of the, uh, instead of the swordsman, which is sort of a not spectacular upgrade, really. The thing it gets is the ability to build with copper instead of iron. So normal swordsmen can only be built with iron, but we can build copper. You simply build. We can build them with copper instead if we really feel like it. Right. The other thing they get is free gorilla one, which is basically like rough terrain bonuses in Civ 5, but they only apply to hills. The difference is that at Gorilla 2, you get double movement in hills, sort of like a scout. Right, so, that's all well and fine. This plays into a larger theme that, that the Celts have, though. Alright, that you really want, I gotta stop, I gotta stop saying that, that you really want to look for. For example, let's go back, uh, for example, with the Dun, the Celts need building, which is a unique walls in places, which you'd think, well, walls must be pretty useless. And for the most part, it is. But what the walls do give you that, or what the Dun does give you that the uh, walls do not, is Free Gorilla 1. So all of your units, especially the, um, I don't know if this stacks with the, with the Gallup Warriors or not, but all of your units are going to have just 20% health defense in the city you build this in. It's just a free promotion, which means if you have a barracks in your city, then you can just instantly pop the hills too. And even higher up, you can get Gorilla 3 for 25% health attack, which is huge in the medieval era, because it means you can take down cities really well, uh, with broad chances excellent. So we're going to try to see if we can get um, Gorilla 3 as fast as possible for that reason. Our leader here is Boudicca, and I picked Boudicca for a special reason. I think she's one of the has the, some of the best synergy in traits in, with the Civ in the game. She's got the aggressive trait, which normally it's not very flexible. It's not on. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's also not very good because it can only be used for war and nothing else really. So what gives all of her melee and gunpowder units is just free combat, but combat one. That's ten percent strength say, okay, so how, how effective is that? Well, it sort of scales with difficulty. Or, sorry, with era. For example, this scout has a strength of 1, so he's getting what? Like, he's getting 1.1 strength. Not a whole lot of a difference. But, think about a 5-strength uh, unit. Like, a, I think like an axeman is 5-strength, or maybe they're 4-strength. But 5-strength units with that would have 5.5 strength and then 50 strength units would have 55 strength. So it does start to add up later in the game you go, and then you add consecutive promotions like this, where you're just getting higher and higher uh, strength bonuses. It does matter. In combat 5, you've already got 50% extra strength, and then in combat 6, it's just massive. It's just unbeatable. You're almost... I believe it at combat 6, you have 75% increase in your combat strength, which is completely ridiculous. Right. What we're going to be doing with the Celts is we're going to be trying to see if we can chain promotions as much as possible. Because we got already going to have, for most of our combat units, Free Combat 1, Free Gorilla 1, not including what we're going to be getting from our barracks. And we produce barracks twice as fast, so we don't have to, be worried, we don't have to worry about um, taking too long in the early game to build them, get them up faster in all our cities. And then also, on top of that, we've got Charismatic. And Charismatic is a pretty decent trait. One of the things it gives us is one happiness per city, which is already pretty solid. But the big thing here is we we have what Shaka has in Civ 5. Lower XP requirements for for promotions, which means we get our promotions faster. So we're talking at least three with a barracks, free promotions for our units. Four if it's a Gallic Warrior. Plus we're getting them much faster. And we're going to build the barracks to get those those much faster. So our goal for the Celts is just to try to see how to, to get a veteran army, to get an army that knows what it's doing and that is very, very experienced and has these really high-level promotions. Let's try to see if we can really chain those promotions as well as possible and have a super, super valuable army. So we don't even have to succeed in tech. So if we're running, like, muskets and the person ahead of us is running rifles, it's not going to matter because we're going to have so many bonuses. We can afford to start a skip on our tech, is the idea. Back to Charismatic, it also gives us one free mon a happiness from every monument, and that's pretty solid if you build monuments. 
But it's even better synergized with Stonehenge. Which, hey, we're the Celts, right? And Stonehenge gives us a free monument in every city. So it's essentially just one happiness per city. It's really good. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get that. I'm not confident. And then also it's a happiness from a broadcast tower if that matters. I mean, probably not. By that I mean by the time you're getting broadcast towers, you're I, you're pretty far off. It probably isn't gonna impact the outcome of the game. Alright. So with that all said and done, let's take a look at our start, at where we are in the world, right? <laughs> I have gotta stop adding that right suffix. So as we can see, because we're the Celts, we obviously want a lot of hills, so we can sort of chain that hills promotion, try to see if we can move around like that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven hills that we can see within our immediately immediate area. And those don't go away, unlike like a forest woodsman promotion, which will eventually sort of dissipate as the game goes on and the forest disappears. The hills are always going to be there, so we're always going to be able to get those bonuses. What's more, we've got a lot of lush forests, we've got pigs and rice, which means we're going to be getting some really nice food early on. We've got wine, which we can only get at Calendar, actually. And Calendar in Civ 4 is not as easy to get to as it is in Civ 5. It's actually located, I believe, at the late Classical Era. Right. Right here. So, it's going to be a while. But, hey, I mean, wine is not a bad tile. It's already a 1-1-2 one, one, tile. We could put, like, a cottage there or something while we, wait, while we wait, and then put a winery over it later. Overall, things look pretty solid. This is just sort of uh, the intro video, the episode zero, where we sort of talk about what we're going to be doing. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. And I hope to see you later. I hope you stick with us. Goodbye.